The following is a presentation on respiratory specimen collection for your education and assistance and has been provided by the New South Wales Department of Health. The aim of the video is to demonstrate the correct way to collect respiratory swabs. We will cover four main issues. One, to collect good quality specimens. Two, to ensure the healthcare worker is safe by constantly being aware of infection control. Thirdly, adequate and correct documentation. And finally, to ensure the patient is comfortable during the procedure. It is important to understand that the methods explained in the presentation do not just apply to influenza, but can be used in the collection of nose and throat swabs for other respiratory viruses. Before collecting any specimens, it's important to know something about the virus you are dealing with. For example, its virulence. That is, how much harm it can do. This can change from year to year. You'll also need to be aware of how infectious the virus is. You must refer back to your state's public health guidelines and updates for information on virus outbreaks and infection control. Now you can proceed to collecting the swabs. Ensure that you have all the necessary equipment prior to taking the swab. This will include alcohol-based hand rub if soap and water is not available, appropriate mask, disposable gloves and gowns, eye protection, a waste bag for contaminated items, pen, request form, viral swabs, a specimen bag and a box of tissues. Always check that you are using the correct type of swab, that is a viral transport swab. Please note there are a variety of suitable swabs for taking viral specimens. We are demonstrating the use of two of the most common types. The first one is a green capped viral transport tube that looks like this. The next type is a universal transport media, UTM tube, which uses a flocked swab and it looks like this. Now the patient has been identified as requiring swabs to be taken. If symptomatic, they should be wearing a mask and have access to alcohol based hand rub. You need to explain to the patient that if they're going to cough or sneeze, to turn away and cover their nose with tissues and dispose of them correctly. It's also important to explain to them that touch is one of the major ways of transmitting a virus to other people. If they cough or sneeze into their hands, their hands are now infectious. If they touch a surface, the surface can then transmit a virus to someone else touching it. Finally, you need to explain to the patient what you're going to do. You're going to ask the patient to take off their mask, stand with their back against the wall, or if unable to stand, sit in a chair with their head supported either by the chair or against a wall. If the patient is from an aged care facility and is unable to sit or stand upright, ask them if they can sit up in bed with pillows propped behind them. You are going to stand to one side of them and you will place your non-dominant hand on their forehead and insert a swab into their nose, only two or three centimetres. Also, explain to the patient that this might be slightly uncomfortable and may cause their eyes to water. You'll then ask the patient to open their mouth so you may take a throat swab. This isn't too uncomfortable but may cause a gagging reflex. Once the swabs are taken, you'll then give the patient some tissues and ask them to wash their hands and put on a new mask. They'll then be directed to a waiting area following completion of the procedure. Ideally, swabs should be collected in a single room. However, in some instances, it may be required to use a screened off area for collection of swabs as a designated collection area. The next step is to collect as much information as possible on the patient. This is documented on the specimen request form. On the request form, you will need to document the patient's name, date of birth, requested test, date of collection, description of symptoms, date of onset symptoms, travel or contact history, vaccination status if known, and any contact with a public health unit. Also, you'll need to label two viral transport tubes with the patient's name, date of birth, date of collection, and site of specimen. Next, you'll need to put on personal protective equipment, commonly referred to as PPE, as defined in the guidelines for the particular respiratory virus. This is an important step in the process. 
If you are unfamiliar with using PPE, consult an infection control expert and practice prior to collecting any specimens. Firstly, wash your hands as referred to in the New South Wales Department of Health hand hygiene policy. Then, you place the gown on like this. Place your hands through the sleeves, then secure the top of the gown behind you. To secure the middle of the gown, make sure the ties are placed in a position where you can easily untie them when you are removing the personal protective equipment. Next, select the appropriate mask according to the relevant guidelines. Place the mask on like this. Place an elastic loop over each ear, then open up the mask so it covers the chin and goes over the nose. Using both pointer fingers, mould the bridge over the nose. If you're using a face mask with ties, secure the mask by tying the strings at the back of the head and the nape of the neck. Next, select appropriate protective eyewear according to the relevant guidelines. Place the eye protective equipment on, ensuring a good fit. Finally, you put on your gloves. Ensure that the gloves are the correct size and are placed over the sleeves of the gown as demonstrated here. Now, with the personal protective equipment on, you're ready to take the swabs. Perform an identity check with the request form that you've just filled out. Ask the patient to remove their mask and dispose of it properly. Then, ask the patient to rest their head against the wall or the back of a chair. To ensure a good quality specimen, collect epithelial cells from the nasal septum and pharynx and avoid nasal secretions and saliva. Standing to the side of the patient, not in front, as they may sneeze on you, place your non-dominant hand on their forehead. Insert the swab two to three centimetres horizontally into the nostril. Place sideways pressure on the swab to collect the cells from the midline nasal septum and rotate it two to three times. Carefully place the swab back into the collection tube. If you are using the UTM tubes, the swab should be carefully placed into the tube as demonstrated here. The cap can then be used to help snap the shaft at the snap point. Ensure that the snapped end of the shaft fits snugly into the middle of the cap, then close and tighten the cap. As the medium used in this system is a liquid form, care must be taken not to spill the contents of the tube. Now take out the second swab. As before, place one hand on the forehead and ask the patient to open their mouth widely for collection of the throat swab and insert the swab avoiding any saliva. The uvula hangs from the centre of the throat with the focal pillars on either side. The swab needs to be placed just behind the focal pillars. Place sideways pressure on the swab to collect the epithelial cells from the pharynx. Then place the swab back into the swab tube. The collection procedure is now finished. The collector takes off their gloves and performs hand hygiene. Give the patient a couple of tissues which they can then place in the bin after use. The patient is then asked to perform hand hygiene and you give them a new clean mask. the patient may now leave. It is very important how you remove the remaining personal protective equipment. You need to assume that these items are all contaminated. The sequence of method of removal is important. First, remove your eye protection. Always try to remove the items from the back as they are less contaminated. Next, remove your gown. Remove the gown from the back or sides, avoiding touching the front of the gown. Fold the gown from the inside into a bundle. 
As before, avoid touching the outside of the gown. Then wash your hands. Finally, remove the mask. With clean hands, remove the mask by pulling it away from the face. Ensure the top and outside of the mask in no way make any contact with your eyes or nostrils. Then, perform hand hygiene. Finally, arrange for transport of your specimen to the laboratory.